Now, let's look at the Vietnam War, the Vietnam War. So this is another conflict again, another conflict of the uh, Cold War. So this was there in 1962 to 1975, 1962 to 1975. So in 1954, in 1954, uh, the nationalists, nationalists and the communists forced the French occupants out of Vietnam, out of Vietnam. In the next, in the next few minutes, we are going to see the map of Vietnam. So we are saying that the nationalists or the communists, they forced the French out of Vietnam. So if you see here the French already, you see capitalism here. And nationalist and communist already, they are communi uh, practicing communi communist government. So the country was divided on the 17th parallel, on the 17th parallel, that is the 17th uh, degree latitude. Now, uh, with the north, uh, that is the north of Vietnam, uh, it was led by the communists and the south, it was under the corrupt and anti-communist uh, regime of Ngo Ding Diem. Ngo Ding Diem. So in 1959, this gentleman, Ho Chi Ming, supported the Viet Cong forces, the Viet Cong forces, the military traditions or military group to invade the South, the South or South Vietnam. Why? Because we have just said that the leader there, uh, Ngo Ding Diem was corrupt and he was also anti-communist. So this Chi, uh, Ho Chi Minh, uh, he supported the uh, military forces to get the government of the South, which was corrupt as well as anti-communist, to get it by force. So the Americans, they decided to get involved to contain, in order to contain or to avoid the spread of communism. So that's why they got involved there. They did not support the corruption of uh, of this Ngo gentleman, no, but the aim of their involvement was uh, to stop the spread, to stop the spread of communism, to contain communism. So before we proceed, let's just quickly look at this map, and uh, this is the map of uh, Asia, the map of Asia. So as you can see here, uh, you can spot some of the uh, the countries that you can identify here, uh, there are countries like India, you know India, very soon we'll be looking at the decolonization of India. So the part that we'll be looking at is this one, it was under the British, so we'll be looking at that. You can also spot another country, uh, there's Burma, Burma here, Burma, uh, Nepal is here, uh, and China, this is the whole of this is China, and uh, China is very big. Oh, this is China. It makes boundary here. It goes, 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 goes there. China. China is very big. It's very, very big. See, it goes back into India there. There, there. All that is China. But there is also Thailand here. Have you seen uh, Thailand? Thailand is here. Uh, here is uh, Thailand. But the country that we are looking at is this one, this one, this is Vietnam. Have you seen this? Yeah, it goes like that, like that, Vietnam, Vietnam, Vietnam. The whole of this is Vietnam, 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 Vietnam. Now, we are saying that it was divided uh, on the uh, 17th parallel, assuming that the latitude 
uh, that is 17 degrees from the equator is this so it was divided just here whereby there was the, the north here which was a communist country just because china already here it was a communist country but the south here or the southern part it was led by the anti-communist government of ngo and he was corrupt so that's why ho she ho he supported a military tradition here so that they overthrow the leader and spread communism uh, throughout so this is vietnam the country vietnam is the whole of this this is what we call vietnam of this country so i hope now you know the location of vietnam on the map now uh let's look at this one the domino theory here we are still looking at the uh, vietnam we are not outside we are still looking at the uh, vietnam but mind you our topic is the cold war the crash of ideas between communism and capitalism so now we have taken our struggle our conflict into vietnam we want to see what happened there in vietnam so let's uh, move on now here we are talking of the domino theory the domino theory so the americans they justified their intervention or in vietnam on the domino theory so here we have just mentioned something maybe that we don't know so what was this theory so this was a belief that if one state fell to communism eventually all other neighboring countries uh, would collapse like the line of dominoes dominoes is a game i've ever played this game so it's a game of dominoes if we, you want to find out you can always google today with the internet everything is cheap so google and find out how this game of dominoes work so you'll see that one so here the americans their presence why did they got involved in uh, vietnam so the reason here is that they were using the domino theory which states that if one state falls under communism eventually the neighbors will be following that one so now and again it'll be like uh, it will be spreading it will spread to the whole world therefore the americans they were quick to stop the spread of communism where they uh, were necessary so the american uh, what they did in vietnam they first supported the south Vest vietnam they supported the, the south vietnam with arms and supplies so at first they did not go there they were just supporting supplying the arms supplying the uh, uh or whatever was needed there the food stuff and the like and later they deployed the troops there uh, to defend the south against communism so later when they saw that communism was uh, gaining momentum then they sent their troops there to say all right go soldiers and uh, fight against communism so diem's government was getting more and more corrupt see the more they were supporting diem's government the americans they were pumping in a lot of money the more the leader of south vietnam was getting uh, wealthy wealthy he was uh, piling wealthy for himself he was, get, he was getting more corrupt more and more so he even crashed with the buddhist so look at this these were the buddhist they were the religious groups not uh, advancing maybe any political views so he crashed with them in 1953 which was uh, not good at all because the buddhist in the on the other hand they could interpret that oh the americans they are supporting the government to crush religion here so that one did not go well with the americans so this one it annoyed the u.s government and then the americans they began to secretly assist the south uh, vietnam army to overthrow dm so with that uh, then the americans were not happy then they started directly supporting the army you see sometimes uh, uh, it happens in uh, maybe different countries they can uh, support directly the army 
if they are not happy, maybe if the Westerners, they are not happy, they can support, they do that, they do that. Sometimes, uh, like here, in, 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 we have evidenced that uh, the, the Westerners or maybe other countries, they can support maybe the non-governmental organizations so that they make a lot of noise, make a lot of noise against the government. So if that fails, you find sometimes the same they can support directly the army now to say, all right, the army, here's the money, here's whatever, then overthrow the government, then they can do that. So that's what they did in Vietnam. Uh, the Americans, after they were not happy that uh, DiEM was now indulging into crushing the religious groups of the Buddhist. Then there was what was called the Operation Rolling Thunder. Operation Rolling Thunder. This one is still in Vietnam. We are still looking in Vietnam, the Operation Rolling Thunder. So let's look at this one and uh, see how it went about. Now, what happened was that in February, in February, uh, it was February 1964, the North uh, Vietnamese troops, they attacked the U.S. destroyer in the Gulf of Tonkin. So they did that. The North, uh, which was a communist uh, uh, part, then they attacked the U.S. base. So that one did not go well because uh, the North, they were not happy with the presence of USA in Vietnam as a whole. So the North then, they saw to it that with the presence of USA here, it means that the US are going to crush the North and in, uh, impose capitalism. So the North, they were the first to strike. Uh, the communist North, they strike uh, the uh, US base. So the US responded by bombing the naval bases of the North Vietnam. So the U.S. now responded and they destroyed the naval bases in the, uh, of the communist North Vietnam. Later, they bombed the factories in the North there, the fuel pipes, and uh, many things were destroyed there in the North Vietnam. So they also bombed the supply routes connecting the North and the, the Viet Cong bases the Viet Cong bases, those military uh, traditions, military groups, the Viet Cong. So they were, the U.S., they were bombing all the uh, links that were connecting the Viet Cong bases, so they did that. They also used the chemicals to strike off the leaves in order to spot uh, the Viet Cong, the Viet Cong who were hiding in the forest. So what was happening with the U.S. was that uh, when they entered the North, uh, North uh, Vietnam there, they met with a lot of challenges there because the Viet Cong, they were so skillful in hiding. So they were hiding in trees and they were killing most of the Americans there. So the Americans, they invaded uh, a, a way to stripe off, to spread the chemicals in the trees there Therefore, the trees were just drying, the leaves were just drying off. Therefore, the Viet Cong, they had nowhere to, uh, to hide. So they were easily spotted. They are there, they are there like that. So this process of chemical, uh, they killed the animals and they burned people. So this one, it was really qualified. It qualified the Americans' public. So the public back in America, the people were not happy to say, oh, we, uh, we thought these chemicals were only drying up leaves, but look at what is happening. They are killing animals. They are also uh, burning people, the civilians there. So uh, the people in America, they were so concerned to say, no, uh, it cannot go on like that. Then there was the, the, the My Lai Massacre. My Lai Massacre. This is another thing you have to uh, pay attention on how it went about, how the intervention of USA in Vietnam uh, went about. So the My Lai Massacre, it was still in Vietnam. So it happened in, on 16th March 1968. So the American troops, they 
slaughtered they slaughtered uh, innocent civilians at my lai village so my lai is a village my lai is was is a village there in north uh, vietnam so they even took the pictures for that so the horrifying pictures those bad pictures on how they were slaughtered or they were butchered uh, this one could be seen in the uh, print media as well as on the television so the people when they could look at those pictures how the americans massacred those people at that village then it was not really good so the americans were also angry with huge figures of the american soldiers that were dying so why did they do that many soldiers as pointed out they were dying in uh, north uh, Vietnam because those Vietnam they knew how to hide uh, underground in caves and everywhere so they were taking the American soldiers by surprise and they killed a lot of them so that's why they were very angry and went into a certain village here and massacred those people so then the anti-war feelings they grew in America uh, such that people especially the college students they took to the streets to protest to say no if that is the war in vietnam is good it's better that america should just withdraw from there otherwise killing people uh, in that way it cannot happen it cannot assist in any way so there was what was called the vietnam Viet, vietnamization 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 so uh, vietnam vietnamize so there was this president next was uh, who was Richard Nixon so he was elected president in uh, November 1968 yeah so he realized that America could not win this war could not win the war in Vietnam the way things were going there it was impossible for America to win that war so this Richard Nixon he decided on a way of withdrawing USA troops without embarrassment there and to ensure that the South Vietnam did not fall into uh, into communism so he did that and that one was called uh, the Vietnamization so he worked out a policy of Vietnamization so under under this policy uh, he could build up uh, the South Vietnam Army, which could withstand the communist. So that was his thinking. So Richard Nixon, he thought, all right, we are going to withdraw the Americans from the war. But what will happen is that we are going to support, we'll give much support to uh, the South Vietnam so that they withstand the uh, communist takeover, the communist takeover. So a ceasefire was then agreed and american troops began to be withdrawn by 1975 there but on 29th april 1975 the north vietnam the vietnam army they uh, captured saigon so saigon is the capital of south vietnam south vietnam then later on the whole of vietnam became a communist state so it meant that the americans they withdrew there and later on communism won in vietnam but if you look at the uh, the movies uh, there are some movies about the vietnam and the americans most of the times you, those movies they are depicting the vietnam the vietnam dying or the vietnam losing but if you can look at you can study this now you know that the americans were embarrassed there they just withdrew and even the vietnamization did not work out the end result was that communism took over uh, the whole of vietnam now what were the effects what were the effects of the vietnam war what were the effects of vietnam war so there were a number of them number one the americans failed the americans they failed to contain uh, communism so it was victory for communism there 
Number two, over two million Vietnamese and many American soldiers, they were killed. So we have already pointed out that the Americans were dying in large numbers or the American soldiers. That's why they were very angry and they responded by that My Lai massacre. So remember that one. So about two million uh, Vietnamese, they died. Both the army and the, the civilians, they died. And Vietnam was heavily devastated by the American firepower. Remember, we have said that the Americans, they were, they invented a way of spraying the chemicals which burnt the leaves and it burnt the animals and the, and the, uh, the people. So that one devastated uh, Vietnam uh, greatly. And the war, again, the Vietnam War ruined the economy of Vietnam. So the economy of Vietnam, it was greatly ruined. And also another effect of the Vietnam War was that there was a great deal of environmental destruction due to chemicals the Americans sprayed. So there was a great deal of environmental destruction there. Trees were were bent up, the grasses and the like. So it, the country became like a desert, a desert-like. So uh, that one was really bad, a very, very huge effect. So let us look at this one now, uh, the detent, detent. So detent means loosening, that is to loosen. So it was described uh, as a much more permanent improved relation between the Soviets and the, the USA. So after the Cold War was heated up, then there was a period when there was now an improvement in the uh, relations between Russia and the uh, USA. So what were some of the developments during this uh, uh, detent? So number one, in November 1967, there was what was called the Strategic Arms Limitations Talk, abbreviated to SOT. So there were the SOT talks. So these SOT talks, they were aimed to control the arms race. Uh, they were uh, aimed to control the arms race. In November, 1972, the U.S. president, what happened, or there was the U.S. president by the name Richard Nixon and the, the Soviet leader, uh, Leonid Brezhnev, uh, they signed what was called the SOT-1, that is the Strategic Arms Limitations Talk, number one, and uh, the An Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty. So, uh, USA and Russia, they came together and signed those uh, agreements, the uh, strategic arms limitations talk and the anti-ballistic treaty missile. And number two, uh, under the detent or the signs of loosening was that in 1971, the U.S. Secretary of State by the name Henry, Henry Kissinger, he visited the People's Republic of uh, of China. So uh, thus it shows uh, that there was that uh, improvement between the communist and uh, the capitalist West. Since 1949, since 1949, the USA refused to recognize mainland China. I remember the reason of uh, uh, communism because of that communism. So its seat even in the uh, United Nations Security Council, it was uh, blocked and instead they recognized uh, the kai Shek's Taiwan government. So instead of China, the USA recognized Taiwan. So it was like Taiwan uh, was sitting in place of China in the uh, Security Council. So in 1971, Taiwan was expelled and China readmitted to the Security Council. So all those, they were the improvements we see to it that uh, from 1949, uh, China was not represented in the Security Council uh, because she was a member, but she was not represented and she was blocked. 
but instead Taiwan was put there. But we are saying here that in 1971, then Taiwan uh, was expelled from the Security Council and China was brought back to its position. So Nixon was the first US president to visit uh, China. So Nixon also visited China. So he was the first president or the first US president to visit China. And also uh, West Germany and East Germany agreed to rec uh, recognize each other's borders. So all those, they are the, uh, the signs of the detente that is loosening between capitalism and the communism trying like to reason, to come to each other, to reason, to say, right, let us recognize the presence of each other. Remember, we mentioned it uh, of the Russian leader who uh, recognized, who said that, no, we have to live with our differences. So here it means that even the capitalist West, they came to their senses, they understood to say, yes, uh, for us to survive, we need to uh, live with our differences. So that's why we see Western Germany and Eastern Germany, they agreed to recognize their borders. So the East Berliners were allowed to enter the West Berliners. Remember, there was that dividing line, but later on they were allowed uh, to enter uh, into each other's territory. And also in July, in July 1975, the Soviet and the American astronauts, they orbited the Earth together in a spaceship. So that was a, a milestone improvement between those two uh, ideologies, that is capitalism and the communism. So we are saying in 1975, the US and the, the Russian, uh, Russian astronauts, the people who move into the space, they were together in the spaceship uh, orbiting the Earth. So it was a big improvement. And again, in 1975, uh, a conference was also held at Helsinki in fin Finland. In Finland, there was a, a, a conference there. So at the conference there, uh, they also agreed to say uh, West Germany and East Germany, uh, they have to recognize each other's uh, boundaries. And not only that, the Soviets, uh, would buy American grain and export oil to the West. So it was like a, uh, an agreement, business or trade agreement. Russia would buy the American grains and also export oil to uh, USA and the Western Europe. And also all the 35 parties uh, that were represented there they agreed to respect human rights. So at that conference, all the 35 countries that uh, were present there, they agreed to respect the human rights. But communist countries were less committed to uh, the pledge of respecting the human rights, although they agreed that they were going to respect the human rights. But now, uh, we need to see the reasons why was there that loosening, that detent. Why the detent? Number one, uh, the reason for loosening was that the Vietnam War had damaged the American uh, confidence. Remember, uh, people now started to question the confidence of, of America to say, how can they uh, rip off for, uh, Vietnam like that? Are they res re respecting the human rights? So that's why they came to stage that loosening to say, right, and no, we have to show that uh, we can respect the human rights. And the, the American realized that they could not fight uh, communism. So with that v Vietnam War, the Americans they realized that no, we cannot defeat communism. So they looked for a way to avoid any further conflict. So it was like now they understood to say, let us just start to live with our differences. So there was uh, that understanding to say, now we cannot defeat communism. 
let's just try to come together with those communist countries and forge ahead. That's why there was even uh, the detente uh, came to the extent of uh, trying, uh, signing the trade agreements, whereby we have seen here that Russia would now uh, buy from America and America would buy from Russia, although they had uh, those idea ideologies, uh, difference, differences in ideologies, communism and capitalism. And the other reason for the detent was the cost of nuclear weapons was rapidly rising. So the cost of making those nuclear uh, weapons, uh, it was rising. So as a result, the economies were going down. The economies, they realized that they were just embarking on uh, building the nuclears as, is, as such some aspects of the economy were neglected and that one would cripple their economies. Yeah, so we are saying that they realized that they need to spend much on uh, poverty reduction in their countries than re uh, and rebuilding on of the industries than uh, just embarking on the nuclear uh, production. So, on the other hand, the detente, it collapsed. Well, the short talks uh, were underway. So while they were making that uh, sort agreement, then the, that loosening, that period of calming down, uh, it collapsed. So President Jimmy Carter uh, angered Brezhnev of Russia. He angered him uh, when he, crit uh, he criticized he, uh, uh, Russia of violation of the human rights. So on the other hand, also Russia uh, blamed uh, the poverty in the USA on violation of human rights. So it was like uh, uh, just a blame game. Hey, they, you are uh, infringing the human rights there. Then the other country also, uh, you are also doing the same. So the sort too. Uh, the sort too uh, was signed in 1979, but the U.S. Congress, the U.S. Parliament refused to endorse it because the Soviet invaded Afghanistan in the same year, 1979, in December. So the USA said, uh, we have just uh, agreed, signed that sort. Then uh, this other side is now capturing or invading uh, another country, another independent country that is now uh, removing that human right. The safe determination uh, policy is not respected here. So the parliament of USA denied uh, to endorse uh, that sort too. Now we have just mentioned <coughs> of uh, Russia. We have just mentioned of Russia invading uh, Afghanistan in 1979. So in 1979, the uh, Russian troops, they invaded Afghanistan uh, under the pretext of restoring order. They said, ah, no, we want to put order in, uh, in Afghanistan. You know, uh, Afghanistan is just near Russia. So if there's disorder in our neighbors, it, that one can spread into Russia. So we just want to put order there. But the real motives uh, were to offer support to communists uh, who were in power so as to maintain the Soviet influence in, the, in that region in Afghanistan. So basically their aim, the aim of Russia was to uh, give power to the communist leaders who were now in power in Afghanistan. Secondly, the other motive was that the Soviets, they were interested in the oil resources in Afghanistan. So uh, that was another motive for invading uh, invading Afghanistan. Another reason for Russia invading Afghanistan was that they were afraid that the Islamic revolution in Iran might spread to Afghanistan then later enter even into uh, Russia. So they wanted to preserve communism in, uh, in Afghanistan so that uh, the revolution, the Islamic revolution should not spread further into their country that is Russia. 
the USA Muslim world and some communist uh, nations such as China and Cuba, they condemned the Soviet intervention in Afghanistan. So on the other hand, uh, Russia was blamed for invading Afghanistan. So uh, the federal uh, communist countries, they uh, condemned it. Uh, they condemned Russia for that action. So we are talking of China and even Cuba. These two countries, uh, they were communist countries and they, com uh, they condemned that action by uh, uh, Russia in Afghanistan. So President Brezhnev, that is uh, of Russia, he defended the Soviet action as a reaction to Western efforts to destabilize Afghanistan. So. Uh, Russia, on the other hand, he, he challenged, he said, no, we are doing this in order to stop the USA, uh, to stop uh, the USA from uh, destabilizing Afghanistan. Then the US president, on the other hand, uh, uh, he was Jimmy Carter. Uh, Jimmy Carter was the president by this time. So he called for a boycott of the 1980 Olympic Games, which were uh, to be held in Moscow, that is Russia. So because of what happened with Russia in Afghanistan, then the U.S. said, no, uh, uh, let us not all go to Russia for the Olympic Games that were scheduled in 1984. Russia is not respecting the human rights. So that's what the U.S. President Jimmy Carter called for uh, in 1980. So let us look at uh, the end of this Cold War. We have looked at a number of issues that uh, showed that there was really the Cold War, the differences or the crash of ideologies. But uh, this Cold War came to an end. So how did this Cold War uh, came to an end? So Ronald Reagan, he was the uh, president of USA in uh, 1980. He was elected in 1980 as the US president. So what he did was that he now increased the nuclear defense budget. That production of uh, nuclear weapons now when he came uh, became the president, he saw to it that uh, what Russia is doing is provoking maybe further war. So what happened now? Uh, Ronald Reagan said, now we are going to build more of the nuclear weapons. So the new Soviet leader, Mikhail Gorbachev, he realized that his country was now bankrupt and they could no longer compete with the Americans. So with that then, uh, uh, it is to be, uh, it has to be noted there to say even the Americans, they knew that the Russians now are struggling economically. So to threaten them that they cannot compete with us, let us show that uh, they are behind. Let us build more, more and more nuclear weapons. So it was like an open production to say now America is now going to produce a lot of nuclear weapons. So when Russia heard that one, then she was frightened to say, no, we cannot compete with USA at this time because we are now bankrupt. Then this new U uh, Russian president, that is Mikhail Gorbachev, then he opted to build up his country because they were bankrupt. So when uh, you are bankrupt, you have to know what to do. Then in 1987, the two leaders, that is Ronald Reagan of USA, uh, Ronald Reagan and uh, Mikhail Gorbachev, they met and agreed to dismantle the long-range missiles and stop building them anymore. So with that then, uh, Mikhail Gorbachev and uh, Ronald Reagan, they met and discussed to say, no, we cannot continue competing in the production of uh, nuclear weapons. Our economies, they need us also to invest much. So let us dismantle all the missiles and stop building them. So they agreed on the same. So this was the end of the arms race. It was the end of the nuclear or missile production. So Gorbachev, 
he brought some liberal reforms in even in Russia. He started to be liberal, not to be strict on uh, the communist ideologies. So he introduced the policy of grass knot or greater openness. So he uh, introduced that one, that policy of greater openness. So this had a big impact in the Eastern Europe, that is in the communist world. So it gave people greater freedom. So while we know uh, up to this time that communism could not give freedom uh, of expression to the people. So Gorbachev, after realizing that they need to invest much in their economy, Russia needed to build the economy much, then he was now liberal uh, to say, no, the people, uh, they are free uh, to have uh, their expression. So the people in the region could now uh, take to the streets without fear of uh, being intimidated by the police and or uh, ruthless treatment uh, by the government. So they could go to the streets or demonstrate and demand for reform. So we can see to it really it was quite another type of uh, leadership that was there in Russia that embarked or that thought of building their economy rather than competing in just ideologies. So later on then there were strikes and the demonstrations uh, in different places. So strikes and uh, demonstrations were uh, uh, commonplace. So uh, people could stage their uh, demonstrations uh, in order to, exp uh, to express their views. Uh, so that the government should understand them. Mind you, we have just said that the Russian uh, economy was now bankrupt. It meant that the people were facing the hard times. So that's why we see the demonstrations and the strikes. So the Soviet satellite states demanded independence. On the other hand, they demanded independence from Moscow or from Russia. They said now uh, Russia should just concentrate on building her economy. Let us also be independent. They, those independent or those satellite states that were the communist states who talked of Poland and many others, they were demanding independence from uh, Russia. So the Soviet Union began to disintegrate. So from there then, the Soviet Union began to break. That is, uh, countries now began to uh, demand their or to become independent one by one of those satellite states they uh, started to be independent and that was the disintegration the dismantling uh, the breaking up of uh, the soviet union so in berlin the citizens they raised down the berlin war uh, on 10th november in 1989 so in berlin there was that uh, berlin war that divided uh, the part of uh, uh, the east and the part of the west. So with that then, the people in Berlin, they broke uh, down that war. So in 1990, uh, Gorbachev, that uh, Russian leader, and the US president, the new US president, uh, George W. Bush, George W. Bush, this is the uh, George W. Bush who just passed away, uh, is it in, uh, 2019, yeah, declared uh, declared at Mota. They met at Mota uh, somewhere in the Mediterranean Sea. There, uh, that the Cold War now was over. So they called for a meeting between Russia and the U.S. They met uh, somewhere in the Mediterranean Sea at a country known, known as Mota. So there, uh, they declared that the Cold War is now over, it has now ended. Now, after the end of the Cold War, uh, still there were some impact. So what was the impact even uh, during that Cold War? What have we seen so far that uh, the Cold War brought into this, uh, this world? Number one was that it fueled internal conflicts in the newly independent uh, countries in the sub-Saharan Africa. So uh, there were those internal conflicts 
internal conflicts uh, in uh, the sub-Saharan Africa. So we talk of uh, many countries. So the two, uh, in two, uh, the two superpowers, they interf uh, uh, their interference in the armed nationalist struggle uh, promoted, uh, they promoted conflicts, conflicts. So we are saying that the, the two superpowers intervention or interference in the, uh, in the affairs of other countries so here we're talking of even the sub-Saharan, uh, it brought, it promoted conflicts. For example, uh, in Angola, the communist Russia and China conflicts, they sided with the Marxist MPLA. MPLA was a group, uh, a nationalist group that was fighting against the government. And on the other side, the Americans, they supported the UNITA or the FN. LA. So you can see to it, in the same countries, they were supporting different uh, nationalist groups. The same Americans on the other side, and the, uh, the Americans on the other side, and the, the Russians, or the communism, or the communists on the other side. So they were supporting, they were encouraging conflicts in, in countries. So, for example, again, the Lenamo and the Frelimo in our neighbor Mozambique. They were also the same. Uh, the other side was supported by uh, the Americans, the other side by the Russians. As a result, conflicts were there in, uh, in Mozambique. And not only that, uh, the long, this one, the long uh, civil wars uh, led to the period, it led to the period of economic stagnation. So there was that economic stagnation uh, and loss of lives and the problems of reconstruction, uh, that is uh, reconstructing their economies or reconstructing their uh, destability or peace in the, uh, in the country. So this long period of civil wars that were there, uh, that were brought by this, uh, this code of it, uh, brought stagnation, loss of lives, and problems of uh, reconstruction in, uh, in Africa. In, we are talking of sub-Saharan Africa. So here, that's why you have to come to that sense to say, why are we studying, or why were we studying the Cold War? So here, that's where we have to get the sense here to say, that impact, we have just taken it in the sense of sub-Saharan Africa. So in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, there was that impact of that code war. Although we have uh, talked of Afghanistan, Vietnam, Americans, the Russians, sometimes someone can say, ah, this one is so boring. Why studying this? But here, we, that's where we have to study uh, to understand it, to say that it brought uh, a period of economic stagnation in sub-Saharan Africa, whereby there were the loss of lives and uh, the problems of uh, reconstruction where even uh, even Malawi had that Im, uh, impact or felt that impact of the Cold War. Remember, I just uh, we just mentioned over uh, the Frelimo and the Namo, they were fighting in Mozambique. Remember that period? What happened was that uh, the refugees, the people from Mozambique, they flocked to Malawi. They were running away uh, from Mozambique and a lot of them, they came to Malawi. Now their presence in Malawi, also had an impact because we were scrambling. When they were here, uh, we were scrambling with the few resources that we have here. Uh, we talk of medical resources and many other food and many others. So we see to it that we felt the impact of that code war, whereby the conflict of ideas was between USA and Russia, but they supported the civil wars in sub-Saharan Africa that had that brought in an impact. So we're talking of the impact of economic stagnation, loss of lives, and <clears throat> problems of reconstruction. So <clears throat> in the next in the next topic, or in the next topic, we are going to look now uh, to focus on decolonization. 
So on decolonization, we will look at the decolonization of Asia and Africa. So in Asia, we we'll focus on uh, on India, and in Africa, we we'll look at Kenya. So these two, uh, we are going to look at how that decolonization uh, took place. Decolonization, whereby the countries now were fighting for their independence. How did India uh, get its independence? And how did Kenya get its independence? So uh, it will be yet another wonderful topic. So to this far, we have come to the end of uh, this topic that is the Cold War. So it was really a, quite a wonderful topic. But remember, uh, uh, the exercise given, uh, you are going to answer the questions and forward them uh, to the numbers that appear on your screen each and every time so that this one should be an ongoing learning until you sit for your exam. So have a wonderful time. Thank you for your participation. Ndipo anti wapunzira wa ndu otu maso kwa mbili. Ndienga tisimupunzira, skulu wakuikirani haba, mukala otu midwa.